Hello, I've got some drawing for you today and um, I'm going to start off with some things that I do not need you to take notes on. There will be an open note quiz on this material. You're going to need to take a picture of your notes and submit them. But this first material is not stuff that you need to take notes on. Back in the 80s or 90s, there was a program called DARE. And I think it was originally Drug and Alcohol Resistance Education. Um, but it's also called Drug Abuse Resistance Education. And DARE was a program in schools. The word dare means like, I dare you to do something or um, you know to challenge somebody, but dare is also an acronym. You do not need to know that. I'm just laying the groundwork for the overall lesson. Uh, the other thing you do not need to know is this is a type of dinosaur called an ichthyosaur. It's a fish dinosaur that evolved millions of years ago and I'm going to use these two principles to lay out some very, very important ideas. So blank piece of paper for yourself and don't write either of those words, but I want dare and ichthyosaur to be in the background for you. An ichthyologist, by the way, is a person who studies fish. It's a scientist who studies fish. Um, and UNICEF, I'm not going to get to, but there's an interesting link with Smurfs there. So. Draw a picture of a fish, and it could be any of these fish. You've probably seen these before on the backs of cars, little bumper stickers. Sometimes it's an empty fish. Sometimes it has a cross where the eye belongs. Sometimes it says Jesus inside of it, or it might have some odd Greek letters. So draw one of these. It doesn't matter which one, and it does not matter which way the fish faces. This is known as an ichthus. Again, the Greek word ichthus means fish. And the original ichthus, I'm going to be facetious here, was a bumper sticker that early Christians put on their cars. Now, ichthus is a word. It's a Greek word that means fish. But it's also an acronym. Just like dare is an acronym and dare is an actual word. The Greek word ichthus is I, chi, theta, upsilon, sigma, or up here in English, I, chi, theta, upsilon, sigma. And it's an acronym for what early Christians believed. There is some speculation, maybe evidence, that the fish was used as a secret symbol by early Christians. Um, you think about the Bible stories of the loaves and fishes or Jesus, um, helping his disciples catch fish. There's a lot of fish symbolism in the Christian tradition. I hope you've already drawn this. Ichthys is a word, but it's also an acronym. So over here, I, chi, theta, upsilon, sigma. This is the word ichthys. I could do this with dare, drug, abuse, resistance, education but I'm gonna do this with ichthys. The I stands for Jesus. There's no J in Greek, Jesus. The chi is for Christos, which means Messiah, the anointed one. Theos is God. Theology is the study of God. Upsilon is for Eus, which is son, and Sigma is for Soter, savior. I would recommend writing down all five of those words. The Greek word ichthus means Jesus Christ is God's son, the savior. Ichthus, it's a word, it's a Greek word, and it's also an acronym. It's an abbreviation for what early Christians believed. So when people put a fish bumper sticker on their car, what they're trying to communicate is that they are Christians. Ichthus. I don't think very many people put the one with the Greek letters on it because I don't think that many Christians actually know what the word ichthus means or why the fish symbol is what it is. But this goes back to the earliest Christians. Ichthus. It's a popular bumper sticker. Maybe keep your eye out and see if you see cars with it. 
maybe even have a conversation with your parents like, hey, I know why people put fish on their cars. And then you can explain to them that it's an acronym and it's a Greek word and an ichthyosaur is a fish dinosaur. It's not a fish, it's a dinosaur. Um, and an ichthyologist studies fish, ichthus. So you should have a picture of a fish somewhere in your notes and it should explain the five parts of the word ichthus, Jesus, the Christ, God, Son, and Savior, ichthus. Okay, if you wanna make money, Bumper stickers is a good way to go. You can make a lot of money making bumper stickers. I'm going to take you back to my childhood in the 1980s. Um, this is not testable, but I'm leading somewhere. There was a popular window sticker that people put in their car. And actually, they came back a few years ago. So you've probably seen these around too. And it was the, called the baby on board sign. And you can pause this and read this whole article later or the snippet of the article later. But the guy who invented the baby on board sign made a lot of money selling these things. It was kind of like the new pet rock. And you can ask your parents if they know about the pet rock. It was this thing that people sold in stores. It was a pet rock. And somebody made a lot of money selling pet rocks. Well, somebody made a lot of money selling baby on board bumper stickers or window stickers. And somebody at some point thought, hey, I see all those Christians driving around with their fish bumper stickers. I've got an idea to make some money and to express a different belief. So this person came up with what's called the Darwin fish. Draw this in your notes. You might need to do a couple of pages. You don't need to draw this big, but it's a fish with feet with the word Darwin in it. Now it's kind of a joke. <clears throat> Charles Darwin was the first person to formulate the idea of evolution. <clears throat> Excuse me. The idea that humans evolved from lower animals, that fish evolved into mammals, mammals evolved into apes, apes evolved into humans. So somebody came up with the idea, hey, let's take the Christian fish, let's put the word Darwin inside of it, and let's put feet on it, and let's sell those. And they made a whole bunch of money selling Darwin bumper stickers. I don't know how many people do this for intentional purposes and how many people do it just for kind of fun, but the intention behind the Darwin sticker was for somebody to express that they were an atheist, that they weren't Christians, that they believed in the scientific world and the scientific method. They believed in the teachings of Darwin. So they came up with this bumper sticker. Essentially, this communicates the idea of atheism. Well, then some Christians got upset about that, and somebody probably thought, hey, I've got a way to make some money. And so another bumper sticker came out, and the bumper sticker wars ensued. Next one, draw one of these two. They started having Jesus fish eating Darwin fish, or they started having truth fish eating Darwin fish. Either one's fine. This was a bumper sticker that was put out by Christian people who wanted to say that they disagreed with atheists or they thought that atheists were wrong or they thought atheists were going to hell. And so they had their Jesus fish eating the Darwin fish. Because for some Christians, if you believe that everything in the Bible is literally true word for word, then there can't be a big bang. There can't be evolution, that Darwin's theories are wrong and a lot of scientific ideas are wrong. These people are called biblical literalists. I'll put that word on the next page. But draw one of those two stickers or images where there's a Jesus fish eating a Darwin fish or a truth fish eating a Darwin fish because that came to express a completely different way of thinking, a, a completely different worldview which is not the worldview I have. I identify myself as a Christian, but I'm also a scientific person. I have a, a degree in science. I trust science. So a new bumper sticker came out. Here's several samples. You can draw any one of them. Somebody else came out with a bumper sticker that had like a Jesus fish and a Darwin fish kissing each other or a Jesus fish and a Darwin fish saying, can't we just get along? 
I am a Christian, I'm a religious person, and I also believe in science. I do not read the Bible literally. I do not believe, as Genesis 1 says, that there's a giant dome in the sky with water above it. I do not believe that the world was created in literally seven days. As a Christian, I can believe in science. And this belief system, again, draw one of these four. This world, this worldview says I can be a Christian and I can also be a scientific person. That I don't need to have an argument between Darwin and Jesus that being a Christian and being a scientific person are okay. And this is called the contextual approach to scripture. See, I'm bringing it back to the Genesis stuff that you all did. Um, and then this is a different one. This is for people who are secular humanists who believe in humanity evolving itself. You don't need to draw that one. So you should have a symbol drawn that expresses Christianity. And that's one of the regular fish. It's the ichthus fish or the empty fish or the one with the cross where the eye is that kind of looks like a, dumb, a dead fish. That represents Christianity. You should also have a symbol drawn that has the Darwin inside and the feet on it. And that symbol is expressing atheism. The third one you should have is where you have, have Jesus fish eating a Darwin fish or a Jesus fish, um, a truth fish eating the Darwin fish. That is biblical literalism. That is for people who say, I believe the Bible and I don't believe um, science or I don't believe certain scientific principles. And then the other picture you should have should have a Jesus fish and a Darwin fish getting along or swimming next to each other or not fighting, not eating each other. Um, and that's the contextual approach to the Bible. There are millions of Christians who read the Bible literally, that God made us out of uh, mud, God took a rib out of the man, and that's how God made the woman. That's how the world was created, and it happened in seven days. That is a biblical literalist approach. There was one man named Adam, one woman named Eve, and all humans descended from them. A little bit of a gene pool problem there. The fourth picture you should have is the Darwin fish and the Jesus fish getting along with each other. That's an approach taken by millions of Christians. Catholics read the Bible contextually. We don't believe that the world was literally made in seven days. We don't believe that literally God took a rib out of the man to make the woman. We don't believe that literally there was a guy who built a, built a boat, put a bunch of animals onto it, and then it rained for 40 days and destroyed the whole earth. Catholics take that approach to the Bible, the contextual approach to the Bible, not the literal approach. Of course, if you know, if you want to keep going with the, the whole fighting thing, you can have a dinosaur eating the truth fish that's eating the Darwin fish, but you know, you can try to make money on your own that way. Um, I will say that the ichthus comes up in other ways too, that one of the earliest Christian symbols that's found by archaeologists, you don't need to know this, is a circle that's divided up into eight parts. And that you can use that design to trace the I, which is for Jesus, and the chi, which is for Christ, and the theta, which is for Theos, God, and the Y, Eus, which means son, and sigma for Soter, Savior, that this was an early Christian symbol that didn't involve any fish and didn't have Darwin fish eating each other either. Um, this was an interesting article I saw just from Wikipedia about the actual person who invented the Darwin fish. I don't think that the person who invented it realized what kind of controversy it would bring up. So go ahead and make sure you have notes on all four of these symbols and all four of these concepts. Um, turn to a new page and I'm going to kind of summarize some ideas about creation. If you're an atheist, you believe there's no such thing as God and that the world came about by evolution, basically a bunch of accidents. If you're a deist, this is from the ism quiz, you believe in a watchmaker God who made everything, but God doesn't care about us. 
if you read the Bible contextually, you believe that God made the world and that the evo and that evolution is how the world came to be and that the Bible explains who made the world and why God made the world. If you are a literalist, you believe that God made the world and that there was no evolution, that all the scientific stuff is completely irrelevant. And then if you're a polytheist, you believe that I don't know, the world just exists and the gods exist in the world. And there's a, um, most religions, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, have a mixture of people who are contextualists and literalists. If you are a Baptist Christian, you tend to read the Bible literally. If you are a Catholic Christian, you tend to read it contextually. Uh, Episcopalians and Anglicans read the Bible literally. Um, I think First Methodists read the Bible contextually, but if you're a Wesleyan Methodist, you read it literally. So there's a mixture of Jews who read the Bible literally and contextually. There's a mixture of Muslims who read it literally and contextually as well. So here I'm kind of connecting some of the isms we talked about before with the creation stories in the Bible. Um, Words that I might have introduced already, but I'm going to introduce again later, if not. Um, the transcendent view of God is that God is distant from us. God is disconnected from us. So deists believe in a totally transcendent God. And imminence has to do with God being involved and connected with creation. So in the polytheistic worldview, the gods are totally imminent. They're all involved in everything that happens. And... Christians believe that God is transcendent and imminent, that God is kind of beyond our understanding and knowing, but that God is involved, but not like micromanaging everything. So add this to your notes as well. What I really want you to take a picture of is your um, symbols and what each of those symbols may, means. If you can add a second picture that contains this material as well, that would be great. Thanks so much.